Welcome to the Sunday Matinee. I am The Wiz. Every Sunday, I intend to do a small podcast highlighting a mini-review, a list, or even a discussion topic that I can talk about with your input. So if there's something you want me to discuss in the Sunday Matinee, email me at zerowizcast at gmail.com. Or you can comment on any of the videos or any of the blog posts and Twitter posts that I have and say that you have a suggestion for the Sunday matinee. For the first one, I want to talk about some of my favorite performances. Now, I'm not listing them in terms of what's number one, two, three, or four. I'm just giving a random assortment of what I think are really good performances in films that I personally enjoy. I have a list of these performances on Letterboxd at my favorite performances in film. The list articles are not complete, but the the type of movies that I want on there are there. So uh, if you want to check out that list, check it out at letterboxd.com. My username is IamThatWiz if you want to check me out there. Just know that that list is still incomplete at this time. So anyway, let's get into five of my favorite performances that have happened in film. And I'm going to start, well, I'm going to start with an obvious one. Meryl Streep in Doubt. Yeah, I know. Meryl Streep and great film performances. You don't say, Wiz. Yeah, I know. I know. But it can't be stated just how great the performance is by Meryl Streep as the icy stern sister Aloysius Bouvier. From the moment Streep appears with a deliberate walk and slow cocking of the head, Streep inhabits her morally righteous or dubious sister with a subtlety and intensity few actors can really perform. Streep can do great performances in bad movies, for sure. Uh, the Iron Lady proves that point. But when given a great cast to play around with and a script that shows off for immense talent, you get to see a performance that is wholly captivating, at times chilling, but incredibly in-depth. It's popular to clown on Streep for her being awarded way too much, but then you watch her in performances like Doubt, and it becomes clear that those accolades are more than deserved. My next favorite performance is one I think a lot of people haven't given a shot yet, and they really should. And it's Keisha Castle Hughes from Whale Rider. Uh, Whale Rider could have coasted on its heartfelt story, its beautiful imagery, and its intimate look at a society and culture that gets very few stories about them. And yet, Keisha Castle Hughes plays Pike, a girl whose name not only gives her an immense responsibility, but also makes a rift with her grandfather, whom she adores, with a sensitivity and strength that few young actresses, uh, by the way, she was 11 at the time of filming, can muster in order to carry a film. And Well Rider isn't just a kid's film. It's a powerful, heartfelt story about a girl who wants to fight through the preconceptions of elders while taking her rightful place in her society. Castle Hughes played Pi K so well, it landed her a surprise but very deserved Oscar nomination for Best Actress. She became the youngest actress to ever be nominated, but it's clear to see why when you see it on screen. Most film watchers will excuse a child's performance if, if they make mistakes. They don't have to with Keisha Castle Hughes. She owned the role and continues to amaze viewers of this often forgot gem of a film. I highly recommend Whale Rider. Such a good movie. Uh, my next performance that I want to highlight is Bill Nighy from About Time. Uh, when a twist in the film happens, as it does in About Time, it often relies on the story to be engaging enough to make the twist work. But when the twist is a change in genre, you need a constant figure to keep the film connected and grounded. And Bill Nighy was that grounding in About Time. What starts as a film about a young man using his time manipulation powers to court a woman he loves, the film shifts into a father-son dynamic that is far more effective due to the charming and loving performance of Bill Nighy. The film seems to get more talk about Rachel McAdams and Dom Hill Gleason, who are fine in the movie. But the father-son dynamic is incredibly effective because of the sensitive, charming performance of Bill Nighy as his dad. Come for the romance, stay for Bill Nighy on About Time. Next performance, a really good performance. Jeff Daniels, The Squid and the Whale. How can a performance about an asshole be a great one? When it's as multi-layered as Jeff Daniels' performance in Squid and the Whale, it's hard not to be amazed by the craft that Daniels is showing. Daniels' performance is incredibly exacting. It has to be a performance that not only conveys how Bernard is so thoroughly unlikable, but how his toxicity 
damages the people around him both suddenly and bombastically. Daniels plays Bernard with specific tics and mannerisms that when the children start to crumble under the weight of their parents' separation and Bernard's behavior, his performance becomes much more astounding to watch. The Squid and the Whale can be a painful movie to watch. Kids who are unaware how messed up they are, being further corrupted by an uncaring, selfish father, can be hard to sit through. Jeff Daniels performs as both parts dark and darkly comic in a way that few actors can actually take. It's a masterful way to portray an absolute dick. Finally, uh, one of my favorite performances in film, and, and this is a weird one for some people, but I will explain, Lindsay Lohan in The Parent Trap. Yeah, I know. Uh, Lindsay Lohan has become more of a punchline and a cautionary tale than a respected actor these past, like, 10 or 20 years. I get that. But it's only fair to point out the performance that gained her a lot of great reviews and accolades at a very young age. At the age of 12, Lindsay Lohan plays two characters. Separated twins Haley and Annie are played differently and believably enough for some to not realize that they are played by the same actor. It's a performance that has a lot of charm and comedic timing that few will give her credit for since she spiraled out of control in her later years. But I haven't forgotten how utterly charming she was in this film, which should have been a throwaway cash grab remake, but turned into a disarmingly char uh, charming and cute good time. Then again, Parent Trap is in the Nancy Myers film, so maybe it wasn't that surprising. All right, guys, so that is five great performances that I like in films. What do you think? What are your opinions on what are great performances in film? Sound off in the comments. Let me know on social media and let me know on the email at zerowizcast at gmail.com. Happy Sunday, everybody, and I hope you have a good rest of the week. I am The Wiz. Talk to you next time. Bye.